Greetings from Washington, D.C. This is Peter Thomas, the General Counsel of NAAOP. Well, uh, a number of issues are pending. Uh, first, we want to talk about the NAAOP Fellowship and its future. And second, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, where we stand in terms of Washington, D.C. advocacy. The first, uh, the Fellowship. Uh, the NAAOP Board met in Vancouver, and after significant deliberation and um, assessing the pilot test that we had run this past summer on the NAAOP Fellowship Program, decided to extend the Fellowship Program into 2019. And so depending on fundraising, we will have either one or two uh, fellows for next summer who will shadow me and work with the other ONP Alliance uh, organizations as well as the Amputee Coalition in learning about orthotic and prosthetic and the broader uh, healthcare and disability policy uh, and uh, learning about government affairs and how to advocate um, uh, you know, on behalf of people who use and who ultimately provide orthotic and prosthetic services. So this is great news. We're welcoming uh, that announcement. We're going to be making additional announcements in the near future. Uh, so if you know of individuals who use orthotic, custom orthotic or prosthetic um, uh, services, we would very much in, uh, appreciate your um, alerting them to this, especially when we announce formally the uh, fellowship program. And uh, we would like to get as many highly qualified candidates as possible for the search committee to select one or two candidates as fellows for 2019. Thank you for that. Second, uh, a lot has been happening in Washington. Uh, throughout the last several weeks, it's been consumed by a Supreme Court nomination fight. Uh, the, in fact, the House of Representatives has, has already gone home uh, to campaign for the midterm elections, and the Senate will be leaving Washington shortly. Uh, there's been a number of major accomplishments that were made prior to the House leaving uh, Washington. Most uh, significantly, the passage of a continuing resolution to fund the federal government through December 7th. And so that's why the federal government did not shut down on October 1st which was the first day of the new fiscal year, fiscal year 2019. They also uh, passed in full the Department of Health and Human Services Appropriations Bill, as well as the Defense Bill, the Labor Bill, uh, and the Education Bill that funds those federal agencies. The Health and Human Services Bill is of great consequence to uh, O&P uh, clinicians and to researchers and to pretty much anyone that cares about and relies on uh, health and Human Service programs. The National Institutes of Health, I'm proud to uh, announce that we participated in an effort to get an increase in funding and the NIH ultimately got another two billion dollar increase. This is the third two billion dollar increase in three years, which brings the NIH budget to 39 billion dollars a year. The NCMRR, the National Center for Medical Rehabilitation Research, which by the way just recently announced the funding of a prosthetics registry uh, will receive a, a significant increase as a result of that $2 billion NIH increase uh, overall. There are also a number of programs, uh, in particular the Administration on Community Living, which houses the uh, Limb Loss Information Center, which are also receiving increases in funding. So we're glad to see that that HHS bill is through, funded for the, the entire fiscal year, and we won't have to worry about that. Um, uh, again later this year or in, into early next year. Much depends on the election in terms of what follows the, the election in terms of policy and uh, potential bills that may or may not pass. Of course everyone knows that we've been working hard along with uh, AOPA and many of the Alliance organizations to uh, really move forward the off-the-shelf orthotics bill. Um, I, I'm in frequent communication with AOPA and they really are taking the lead along with their lobbying uh, um, uh, firms to advance that legislation to clarify the meaning of minimal self-adjustment and to constrain that broad definition that CMS has given that term uh, for purposes of eventually subjecting those uh, off-the-shelf quote-unquote devices to uh, competitive bidding. Uh, we are in search of a Medicare, what they call a vehicle, a piece of legislation that this bill can be attached to in the, in the lame duck session, which would be in November and December, to see if we can get that bill finally across the finish line, much like the clinical O&P notes provision passed earlier this year. 
there is a chance if the House uh, changes hands and the Democrats take over, or I suppose if the Senate changes hands, although it's less likely, there is a real question as to what the Congress will be able to get done after the election, or whether they'll simply pass whatever they must pass uh, in terms of a continuing resolution to kick the can down the road on spending for the rest of the federal agencies into 2019 and then reconvene as a new Congress after the first of the new year. We'll be certainly trying hard to see as, uh, if we can get, make as much progress as possible, uh, again, as a group of organizations working toward uh, passage of that off-the-shelf orthotics provision. So with that, let me say thank you, and uh, we'll see you next month.